Hey guys, I'm back here for round one. It looks like I won the die roll. How exciting. Uh, this is a reasonable hand. Nothing insane about it, but I have a sky guard and a couple of decent spells. I'd like to draw a couple more creatures, but I have my lands. I have double white. I have blue. Really nothing to complain about here. So we'll keep and uh, be good to go. My opponent's on seven. Should have a pretty nice game here. Unless I lose, in which case it'll be an awful game. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Alright, so we're playing against blue. Already immediately tells me that I can bring in Gainsay from the board. And uh, there's no... There's actually some small motivation in playing an island here. If I draw an island, then I'll have both Retraction Helix and Triton Tactics up for next turn. Which should be pretty good. So my opponent's not going to do anything here. Um... Alright, so I'm just going to attack. He's playing Island Island, representing obviously Nullify. Not much else. Nothing to worry about with this Sky Guard. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to play out the Philosopher. I'm trying to decide. I think I just want to um, I want to do it like this. It's kind of just gives him the idea that maybe Triton Tactics is a possibility somewhere in the future. But... At the same time, it's a benefit to have it up in case he plays like a red land and a uh, lightning strike or something like that. Okay, so he's just going to drop an Agent of Horizons here. Not really a big deal. Um, I'm just going to attack with both my creatures, play a Thassa's Emissary. I do have five lands, but I'd much rather get on the board right here when my opponent doesn't have much. And uh, there's a possibility that I can do some shenanigans if I draw another island at some point. Retraction Helix and Triton Tactics go very well together in that <laughs> what I can do is I can Retraction Helix target this guy, then Triton Tactics target it again, but before I tar before I play the Triton Tactics, tap it to bounce something, and then I can bounce two things that way um, and get in some, some value. So he's going to go with Annihilator's Disciple here, probably attack me with that Agent of Horizons. And um, I'm going to just charge in next turn with my team. If he blocks, which he is likely to... Oh, he did not attack. All right, so we got that land. And I think that it might just be worth bouncing his team here just to get some card draw going. No, probably not, because he can just replay this thing, gain some more life. Uh, what I will do is... I will attack with my flyer and Thassa's emissary. Unfortunately, that's gonna. Okay, let's let's think about this. So if I do that, then he's clearly just gonna double block, and that means that I'm gonna have to play both of these this turn. That's not really something I want to do. Well, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so yeah, he's probably actually... I mean, he might just block with one, and then that would be the ideal situation. Okay, he's going to double block here. And this is this is kind of a blowout. It's not like an insane blowout, but... Okay, so first we're going to just train tactics to save our guy. And get a counter here. And then we're just going to retraction helix... So we can bounce the uh, the agent, kill his disciple. So I don't know. We didn't really get too much value out of that play, but I did get to put a counter on the sky guard and uh, slow him down a little bit. So yeah, he's got to replay that agent. Um, not not really a, a perfect situation for me, but Nessie and Demolock, you can have a three three. That's all right. <laughs> I can probably actually just um, run my Traveling Philosopher right into that, as long as I attack with Thassa's Emissary as well. Because um, if he does block there, then I'm basically trading the Traveling Philosopher for a random card on the top of my library, which is a trade that I would like to make. Um, for Unfortunately, I'm probably just going to trade the Thassa's Emissary for the Demolock. I just feel like um, it's better to trade now and get and push through some extra damage. 
So, um, I guess either he thought I had a trick or... Yeah, he either thought I had a trick or that... Um, or he just wanted to make that trade and he didn't feel like eating my guy. I don't know. Alright, six mana. Arbiter of the ideal. That's not very good. Especially because my deck does not really have a good way to beat something like that. Hopeful Eidolon. Not quite getting there. I still need to um, get one more thing. One more counter on it. But we're getting there. <laughs> Ship the turn. I don't know. He might attack. He might not. Probably not, though. And once I get one more bestow or something like that, then I can I can actually start getting in. But I mean, this is this is where the play early on may have been a mistake. Um, I kind of did it just because I wanted to get a counter on this, but I don't know. Probably was it was a mistake, and I probably could have gotten um, a much better situation out of it. So he's probably gonna attack here. No attacks. He's got um, he's got some mana up, so I definitely want to play out a land here. Uh, and I'm just going to ship the turn back. I mean, it's not worth trying to represent something, especially if he does have the trump in Voyage's End. But it is definitely not looking good here. Opponent is just going a lot bigger than us, and I did not get a very explosive draw. So there's a Ferris Band Centaur. He's going to start some sort of clock here. I'm a little shocked that he's not attacking with the Arbiter of the Ideal. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to keep the other land in hand. It's not really doing me any good to cast it. So, um, yeah, we're just going to ship the turn back. I guess he can't really start getting in with this just yet. I'm, I guess I'm, I would be a fan of him playing the Agent of Horizons last turn so he can start attacking. Though, no, he couldn't play that this turn. So, yeah, it's fine. I mean, he can't attack with this because I have a Sky Guard. So he probably doesn't have a Voyage's End here. I would I would feel like it would be actually I should play a land out. Actually, do I ever need to? I don't think I actually need to play this land. It doesn't really do me any good. Considering that I don't think I have any spell that says draw a card on it in my deck. So there's never really a possibility for me to need more than one land. Um I guess I have a Fire's Enlightenment, that doesn't really do anything. No, this is this is da this is getting dangerous. <laughs> um, he's playing, so he played that, so he can't activate this this turn, but he doesn't really need to. There's no like Sea God's Revenge in this deck that can just um, swing this game in my favor. I guess Hold at Bay is probably like my best draw because <laughs> he probably just double blocks or something like that. And, well, I guess I would only be able to kill one thing still, but getting this off the table means that he can't block and kill this. Crypsis wouldn't be bad. Um, it's going to be a while before that kills me, especially because I have this four lifelink. So, I mean, it does make sense to present a clock, but it's not really too relevant here. I guess I can draw like Phalanx Leader and then start targeting it with stuff, but I don't have too much velocity in this deck, and drawing these lands is not great. Playing the land out right away might not be a great idea just because I do just put oh he's got a breaching hippocamp sure so like I mean the thing is the lifelink that I've got it really does um, I'm really surprised that he didn't attack with this arbiter well okay if he doesn't have anything I don't know yeah he can't have anything otherwise he'd be attacking with this and I would be forced to double block I mean I guess he could just be playing around me having the Divine Verdict or a Voyage's End or something like that, but I don't know. At some point, you just go for it. So, I mean, this guy's just getting to see all of the cards that are in my deck. Still leaving up Divine Verdict and Voyage's End and Griptide, so not really any reason to play this land out. But yeah, I mean, if I had drawn these guys earlier in the game before he was able to play this Arbiter, I might be in decent shape. But, uh, yeah, I guess, let's see, I've drawn one, two, three, four of my enablers, so I still have five left. Okay, guy's got flying now. That's not very good for me. <laughs> I just do not know how I'm going to win this game. Eventually, he's going to kill me with that Agent of Horizons. 
Unless, of course, I do draw something that can allow this to attack. But even if I do attack with this, then he can just attack with his flyers. And he'll gain... Yeah, that's not a good draw. <laughs> good old Bronze Sable. As far as Enlightenment would have been a good draw many turns ago. Maybe I should have held this in hand just to play around as far as Enlightenment. Or, like, just in case I do draw it. At least we can bring in the Gainsay. My opponent's not doing anything that's particularly scary, so... Hmm. It kind of looks like I should have killed this Agent of Horizons ages ago, but I just didn't feel like I would be um, in the position where I needed it. it. Alright, so there's an Exploring Triton. Um, I think if I just attack with this, I'm going to die on the backswing, but I don't really know if I have a better option available to me. This will give it seven, uh, seven power. Oh, what you got? A null. Main deck, a null. Interesting. All right. Well, we'll let him. We'll let him keep attacking here, because I know I can get through one of these things, but I can't get through multiple, or like a double block, and he can just throw that thing at it. So, yeah, this is this is not looking good, but. I mean, this it, my opponent's not playing a deck that I don't think I can beat. It's just that I feel like he got off, or I did not get off to a good enough start to beat it. And then draw the cards in the right order. That being said, I don't really have anything supremely more powerful than my opponent's doing, other than like playing an early Afar's Enlightenment on a Sky Guard or a Rider or something like that. Alright, there's a Sphinx's Disciple. My opponent does have a lot of flyers, which is kind of annoying. Um, there's a Nimbus Nyad. Don't really think that does anything here. So if I do put this on here, I get an 8-8 eight, eight lifelink. Um, let's say I attack, um, and he takes it, so then I'm at 13, and then he just sends the team. I think I'm actually still alive, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. It's um, not great to give my opponent information, but there is some possibility that I can come back and win this one, I think. Obviously, my opponent's going to try, or is going to block here. Or not obviously, but most likely my opponent's going to block here. Just probably chump block with either this or this. As far as draws go, that was not a terrible one. <laughs> Would have been really, like, uh, somewhere in the middle of this game, I drew three or four lands in a row, but my opponent's drawing lands too. Nope, so he's going big here. Throwing, I mean, he could just block with one, two, three, and the only thing I can kill is this. But I mean, I was gonna die in a couple of turns anyway. Oh, he's throwing this at it too, so that is actually good for me. So I want one, two. I don't really think it matters after that. So it's just this guy and this guy are gonna die. I'm going to gain some life, I'm going to get some flyers out of this deal, but I'm um, still pretty far behind here. Um, Alright, you go, sir. Got some life back though, so <laughs> that's nice, at least. Yep, unblockable. You got it, buddy. So I can still win, perhaps. Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, seven devotion to white. So if I draw that devotion to white guy, then maybe I have a chance. I don't have anything big enough to block that Ferris Band Centaurs, though. So we're just going to take six here. Good chump block it next turn, I guess. Maybe I should have chumped it this turn. But I think I need to draw the uh, Evangel this turn. Um, and I don't think that I can win. May as well play this island out. But I have a lot of stuff. Alright, so let's just make sure that I don't need to just attack here. So he's got uh, one... No, I don't, I don't think I need to attack with the Hopeful Eidolon here, just to gain some life. So I don't really know what combat's going to look like next turn. 
but I know that I have to chump block here and then attack with everything next turn. <laughs> oh, you didn't see got breaching hippo camp number two. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna assume he's got nothing because I don't think that there's any way we win this game if he does have something. But I can I can do some some thinking based on what he does with this attack. Ordeal, okay. That's an ordeal. Unblockable. And next, this is my last turn, so. He doesn't just, yeah, he has one, two, three flyers, okay. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so let's see what we've got here. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six creatures that can block. He's at 13, so that means that I would have to have 19 creatures out to win this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh... Oh wait, 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I don't think that I can win this one unless I draw a pump spell here. That is not a pump spell, but I'm going to attack anyway, just to make my opponent do some math, even though I am fairly certain that I am dead. If I had drawn a thing that I can pump, or that I can uh, target my elite skirmisher with, that might have gotten the trick done. Let's see, what could I have drawn here? Still left in this deck. Crypsis. Uh, maybe Ray of Dissolution to buy me a turn. If Farah's Enlightenment would have been a good one. Pretty much everything else, though, I've drawn. Yeah, I don't really have a pump spell in this deck, so I don't know. Yeah, if Farah's Enlightenment would have been my best draw. Maybe Voyage's End would have been up there. I don't know. Don't really have too many good cards left in this deck. So what's our sideboard plan? Opponent's got a lot of dudes. <laughs> All right, last breath might not be terrible. Obviously, gainsay is coming in. Nullify might be an option that I would. I mean, it's definitely an option that I want to consider. Doesn't really have too many. Yeah, it doesn't have any artifacts or anything. Um, so last breath for one, two, three, four guys. Probably not last breath. Okay, let's see how much damage you take. I think he's going to take like eight. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, you got it. <laughs> I'm back up to four now. No point in conceding. Don't really gain any value from conceding. But look, my entire team <laughs> is this Evangel. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So, yeah, if I had been able to tap... Well, if he hadn't played this, then... No, I still would have been short. So he's just... Gonna win this game here. <laughs> but that was a fun... That was a fun one. I, I mean, I had to draw that Evangel that exact turn. Yeah, this deck is just not very good, I think, is what it comes down to. But yeah, okay, so we're bringing in this Gainsay. Thinking about this Nullify, too. Because there are a bunch of big creatures that I don't really want to have to deal with. Um, nothing else. I mean, Stymied Hopes, I guess, could get there. What cards are bad here? Ray of Dissolution does nothing against his deck. Uh, man, my pump spells are really bad. I really wish I could have had a Dauntless Onslaught or something like that. I don't think I can really afford to drop creatures. Hold that bay. I need, I need these pump spells too, so. Yeah, I don't really think that there's a spot for either of these two cards. Guess I could cut a bad creature like Bronze Sable. Yeah, alright, let's do that. And we'll cut a Plains for an island. Uh, yeah, let's play first here. Alright, so we got a very good hand very aggressive not not like the best possible draw but to be honest this deck is very bad and it would be hard to get the best possible draw in a bad deck 
I wouldn't mind drawing my phalanx leader at some point to uh, to make this team bigger. I mean, I only have one targeting spell, so it'd be pretty tough. But chances are I'm just going to drop the Vaporkin next turn and start charging in there. Um, I need it. Ooh, that is a good one. I'm just going to try and milk all the value that I can out of this card. My opponent didn't show me any spells to interact. Um, he had played no Voyages Ends, no Grip Tides, no Retraction Helixes, not even a Sudden Storm. He just played bigger creatures. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start getting to work here with this Infara's Enlightenment. It's a little bit risky just dropping it right into Voyage's End. We probably lose the game if our opponent has Voyage's End right here, but Yeah, I wanna I wanna keep playing this card, play this card as many times as possible throughout this game. Arguably I still could have played the Skirmisher this turn. Probably still should have played the Skirmisher. <laughs> But I just want to bounce this card as many times as I possibly can. So my opponent didn't have a Voyage's End. Did not get punished. But yeah, I feel like I need to be aggressive in this matchup. And just playing a 3-mana dude is not really going to do too much here. Alright. Charge in there with this Vaporkin. It already has flying, so I don't need to worry about that. But yeah, we showed him Triton Tactics and Retraction Helix, so I'm going to leave up a blue. I would love to use this ability. <laughs> Nothing would please me more. <laughs> and then <clears throat> next turn, even if he plays a Flying Blocker, I can just tap it down with my Skirmisher. In fact, I think that this Skirmisher is probably going to get hit up with an Afar's Enlightenment many times this game. Sure, you got the attack. I am not going to block. Really don't want to see like a Nessian Asp. That would probably be <laughs> the worst possible. But we're going to be hitting him for 7 in the air next turn. And tapping a blocker. So. Yeah, this is pretty good. And even if my opponent just plays another blocker next turn, I can still kill him, because <laughs> I can target this guy twice. So if, if he doesn't have a removal spell or a bounce spell or something like that, it looks like my opponent's just going to die. <laughs> next turn. Okay, so I'm going to just drop this Omen Speaker here, pick up the Enlightenment, scry a couple. Scry, may as well scry two first, but I'm definitely going to do that. <laughs> Ooh, Retraction Helix. Yes, please. Okay, going to use this ability here. It takes flying away from this guy, but we're just going to cast it on him next turn any again anyway, so not really an issue. So hopefully my opponent just taps out for something not named Nihilia's Disciple, although Nihilia's Disciple would be fine. No, I would need to do one more damage. Yeah, but he can't play it, so hopefully he plays like a Nessian Asp this turn or something like that. Or like a Nimbus Naiad, anything that taps him out. Or Deal of Thassa is okay too. Prefer not to have him draw extra cards and find a Voyage's End or something like that, but if that must happen, then that'll be okay. Ugh, he's still leaving up a blue, so <laughs> he might have Retraction Helix, I guess, but I don't know. Alright, so he's going to draw a card here. Drew, like, what, three cards this turn so far? Or four cards this turn? <laughs> one off the Ordeal, two off the Fate Foretold, one for his draw step. <laughs> so 
would not matter. I'm not going to block. <laughs> I don't really care about you attacking me. But it doesn't really do anything. So I don't know why. Or I'm hoping that he doesn't have the retraction helix here. I guess I shouldn't. I should play my own retraction helix instead of a Pharah's Enlightenment here in case he does have the helix. Oh, uh, wait. I, the, yeah. yeah. The creature gets tapped, and I've already shown him this card, so it's not a big deal. Okay. Because, I mean, if he has Retraction Helix, then I don't want my Fars Enlightenment to go to the graveyard. Um, so I'd rather him just bounce this, and then, yeah, I mean, I think I played around that. Well, okay, but that was that was a... That was an example of what's going to happen if I draw my best card <laughs> in Fars Enlightenment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he played the Triton Fortune Hunter. Another target for Last Breath that wouldn't be terrible. Oh, uh, there's nothing else that I want to <clears throat> take out for sure. I mean, I could try this thing just to break a stall board, which I would not be surprised if that happened. The problem is that there's no cards in my deck that can beat a stalled board. <laughs> so drawing three more cards would not get me there. Right. Um, I'm pretty close to just submitting this list. And hoping for the best here. This is this seems like a tough matchup. Although all the matchups kind of seem like a tough matchup. <laughs> I guess this deck doesn't do anything. This is a really bad hand. Um, I might have to mulligan this hand. Doesn't do anything early. Doesn't do anything late. He chose to play last. All right. Well, I'm gonna keep it. I don't want to be on the mulligan on the play. Um, playing Nullify isn't the worst thing in the world. Just countering the first thing that he plays. It's just I really wanted to get off to an aggressive start here. Maybe that was the wrong decision. I'm not really sure. Let me know in the comments if you think that was a bad idea to keep this hand. It doesn't really have a good path to victory. And six card hands, some of them do. So there's a Sky Guard. It was a pretty good draw. And a Fars Enlightenment again would be uh, would be a nice one. Just start getting in there with a giant flyer right away. Not sure what I want to do with this crab. Mm, Nimbus Nyad. Oh, I kind of just want to bestow that. Yeah, I'll leave up Nullify. This isn't such a bad turn anyway. Can bestow that on my Thassa's Emissary and start drawing cards. Or I can just hold on to both. I mean, I guess if I don't if I don't draw land, then that'll be a really bad play. So I'm probably just gonna counter whatever he plays here, as long as he drops a dude. Yeah, definitely gonna counter this. I don't want to deal with that guy in the long game. But for the most part I'm just countering that because um of mana efficiency. Like it's probably gonna be turn six by the time I'm not going to do anything, and that's just if I don't draw anything. Ugh. All right. Hopefully we draw. We just need to hit one land here. Most important draw of the game of the match, I think, is next turn. Just trying to hit that fifth land. I think it was. It's a better idea to hold the the Nimbus Nyad here. Just because I've seen my opponent play Chorus of the Tides, which can just trade for it, as well as um, Coastline Chimera, which can just eat it, or um, just block it indefinitely. So that makes me happy. Come on, land. Give me that land. Land, no. Alright, well, we're attacking here with this Thassa's Emissary. Actually... I could just Retraction Helix bounce that. That's probably the right play. Um, I have a stop at my... Yeah. Um, I get to just draw a card for my Retraction Helix and make a huge tempo play and put a counter on this. All of these things are good. 
might be a little bit of an aggressive use of of the retraction helix, but I think that it was the correct play. Give me a land. Give me a land. Thank you, Thassa's Emissary. Oh my god, this is good. This is definitely good. I have a gainsay up for if he can if he's just planning on replaying that coastline chimera. Or a bigger. Yeah. This is not where he wants to be. I can bestow the Nyxborn Triton here. Start getting in for a bunch, still have access to Nimbus Nyad on Thassa's Emissary for another surprise flyer. Even if he plays the Arbiter, this is not a big deal. Because uh, both of my guys will have 5 power and more than 5 toughness. So this is, I mean, I'm just drawing my best cards in this game. <laughs> No Wingsteed Rider, but Thassa's Emissary, Nimbus Nyad, Akron, Skyguard, Attraction Helix. This is looking positive. Looking like I might be able to eke out a win. <laughs> I mean, I would kind of feel bad, except my opponent's deck is no better than mine. I mean, you can't just... Maybe he just didn't draw any of it in the first game, but... You can't just play a deck with no interaction with your opponent and expect it to be good. You might have like one grip tide or something like that. I don't know. Anyway. Nothing. Hippocamp? Um, Alright, so. It's probably Hippocamp. I'm just going to bestow the Nyad on this emissary here. It's sort of risky if he has like a grip tide or something, but not really. I mean, that's the good part about bestows is. They're just good. <laughs> Bestowing a creature onto something else, because even if they kill my creature, I'd still get a 2 2 flyer. Spent 5 mana on it, but that's fine. Alternatively, I could have waited for him to play the Hippo. I mean, Hippo Camp doesn't do anything. It might be a Grip Tide. Getting beaten down by two 5-5 five, five flyers. Gotta love Theros Block Limited. <laughs> Alright, what do you have, sir? Voyage's End? Does he have Voyage's End and Griptide? <laughs> Voyage's End. Okay, you got it. Scrying. Card to the bottom. And is this guy just gonna hit you? I feel like that'd be not ideal. <laughs> okay, drawing another extra card. Planes, I guess? Yeah, well. Dream Island. Probably could have seen that one coming. Considering, um... What else is this? Breaching Hippo Camp. Alright, so he did have the Hippo all along. <laughs> but he had Hippo plus Voyage then. So, definitely good that I did this play. Because otherwise I would have gotten blown out. Um, he would have played the Hippo, and then I would have Cripsisted, and then I would have just lost Course of the Tides. Alright, well, if he taps out, then I just win. Mm, he's not really tapped out. He could still have a relevant spell named Retraction Helix. Ah, this is a tough choice. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this guy Unblockable. And... Um, just attack with this and kill this guy. I think it's a little bit safer, because if he does have a bounce spell, then he's bouncing my next born Triton, which I don't really care about. Yeah, alright, let's just uh, first attack. The only thing that he could have here is Retraction Helix to stay alive. And then I'm still fine. I can still play a Skyguard and a Traveling Philosopher and then bestow this onto it. He gets to draw an extra card off the Fate Foretold when he jumps, but... Okay. Managed to win that round, and we were the last ones finished. That was a pretty uh, pretty long game. So yeah, uh, I'll be back in the next round, but I was pretty sick. Pretty happy to win that one. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.